All right, everyone. Thank you so much for waiting. My name is Luis Soto. I'm a part of YABT's communications team, and I will be moderating today's bootcamp session, which is titled How to Make an Impact Video to Promote a Startup with our guest speaker, Cynthia Villar. Um, first of all, I want to remind everyone that this bootcamp session is taking place in the framework of TIC Americas. TIC Americas, of course, is our program to boost young entrepreneurs just like you all around the hemisphere. Um, this would be our 16th edition. We have impacted more than 47,000 young entrepreneurs in 48 different countries. Um, in this 16th edition, we have three categories called TIC Jalisco, Eco Challenge 12, and InnovAction Challenge. If you're a young entrepreneur and you still haven't registered, we really, really encourage you to go to www.ticamericas.net, discover the categories, see which one is best for you, see which one fits more, and please register. We always encourage our entrepreneurs to register early so that they can really benefit off of all of our resources, which include the bootcamp, which is where you are right now. The bootcamp is the tool that we use to give you the skills that you need to make a successful, concrete and professional project. So really, we really, really encourage you to go to tigamericas.net and register. Um, we also wanna thank um, the support of USIL Ventures. With, with, without them, this session would have not been possible. So we really wanna thank them. We have, we have had a very fructitious relationship with them over the last couple of years. So once again, USIL Ventures, thank you so much for their support. Um, without further ado, I want to introduce you to our guest speaker, Cynthia Villar, which is, she is the executive director of Junior Achievement Peru. She's a mentor of Usil Ventures. She's also the co-founder of Mi Bolsillo, which is a digital, a digital app to help you young entrepreneurs organize your finances so you can be more productive. Um, she is also a marketing alumni from Usil University, and she has been awarded many, many awards through her, her illustrious career, including Outstanding Woman Award in 2018. She was the winner of Startup Peru 6G in 2018. Also a South Summit 2019 participant and winner. And of course the FinTech World Challenge 2019 winner. She is also a university professor, speaker and ad honorary member of several nonprofit organizations. She has more than 10 years of experience in marketing. So we really, really appreciate her coming once again um, to be a part of our bootcamp and share her ideas, her experiences, and of course her knowledge with us. So Cynthia, thank you very, very much. We also wanna thank once again, Usil Ventures. Usil Ventures is an incubator and business accelerator of the San Ignacio de Loyola University. It supports Peruvian entrepreneurs in the development of their startups. They were the winners of the 2019 Incubator 2.0 contest organized by the Peruvian Ministry of Productions Innovate Peru program obtaining a financial funding of up to $444,000. They have more than 1,400 mentorship hours, more than 72 active startups, 170, 117 startups incubated and accelerated, 594 created jobs, and more than 33 women founders. So as you guys can see, the impact that Usil Ventures have had in the region is very real, very significant. And we know that it will be like that for, for years to come. So once again, thank you to Ventures for making this session possible. Of course, lastly, we just wanna encourage you guys to so follow us on social media at YABTS in Twitter, at YABTDC in Facebook, follow our friends from Usil Ventures at Usil Ventures. Once again, we encourage you to go to ticamericas.net, see the categories, discover which one's best for you and register now. We are always available through email, ticamericas at yabt.net. And of course, um, also follow our friends at Usil Ventures, www.usilventures.com. Um, without further ado, um, Cynthia, the floor is yours. And thank you, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And take it away, Cynthia. Thank you very much. And thank you um, also, Usil Ventures, for everything you do. Um, I'm, I can say for myself that they are one of the top incubators, accelerators in America. and why not to say the first one in Peru, since they have also um, not only incubated, but also accelerated my, my FinTech. And I'm very pleased to see what they have done with us. So um, thank you once again. And now I'm going to start this presentation with a video 
where I'm gonna ask you to count. And let's see, I don't want I I don't want this to be a monologue. I want us to be able to talk. This should be a kind of a chat because that's the only way that we can make it interactive and, and therefore useful for us. I believe that everything that I will say, you might have heard it or not, but it's maybe the context that I will suggest or recommend, or maybe some tips that you haven't heard. And I think that it will be not only useful, but it can add to whatever knowledge you already have. And especially because if we are here on the other side, giving the lecture instead of being there sitting and, and receiving the information is because we have a longer road walked and, and we have made more mistakes than you. So <laughs> it's only the mistakes that, that have caught us a little bit more. So I'm gonna share the first video with you guys. And okay, I'm gonna do it twice. And I want you to count how many backpack passes does the white shirt team do? So the question is, how many did you count? And I'm gonna play it just once again so that those who didn't get to see everything can see it again. Um, I hope everyone has been able to see it, seen it, but um, let's play it one more time. Ah, I'm sorry, the audio is not being shared. I thought it was already in the settings, which I did before. Okay, let's go again. Ready? Luckily, the audio was just music, so <laughs> let's go. How many did you count? And I please want to read you in the chat. Ten times. Okay, Alberto, a little bit more than that. Let's go. Anyone else? Only Alberto watched the video. I'll read the names. Cecilia, Juan, Maria, Chanel, no one else? More than 12. More than six, 12, more than 12. Okay, I'll let you know. It was 18 times actually that they passed the backpack. But I wanna ask you something else now. Did you see anything strange in the video? Anything that caught your attention beyond the passes that you counted? Yes, no. No, Alberto, anyone else? Anything that you found odd? Are outstanding.
Thank you, Alberto, for being the one answering, really. And please help me the rest. Okay, let's move on. Guys, I need you to participate because participating shows that you're not only connecting with me, but also that you're following what I'm saying and it makes us feel more closer than we are. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you right now what I mean by odd or strange. And I want you to tell You saw the girl in yellow walking by the group. anyone able to see her the first time and the second time I played the video? Guys, oh, I miss her the first time. So you didn't actually see her, right? I'm gonna take Chanel's answer as everyone's answer. <laughs> she missed her the first time. The one in yellow, right? Yeah, the one in yellow. Oh, you didn't pay attention to the girl. So you forgot, exactly, exactly. And that's the point here. Um, whenever we are in our uh, entrepreneur journey, you know, we sometimes focus on some goals that we set as a team or for ourselves, for a venture, and we forget about details. We forget about the other things around us that may also be important. So the message here, well, it's an attention test and, and everything, but the message from me to you with this video is that we need to be able to broaden our scope and, and think not only in the things that we set ourselves for, but also be open to receive more information, to hear, listen, and talk to other people who may give us additional thoughts, ideas, or things that may pivot or even emphasize what we're doing. But we have to be able to not only focus on one thing, but see the macro, you know, all the spectrum that can help you um, become a better entrepreneur. So having that said, today we're gonna talk about an important marketing piece that is the video and how to make it as impacting as possible with limited resources and maybe limited access to things now, especially with the pandemic. So I'm gonna show you two videos. First one is gonna be one that I, we, we did for me, we'll see you. And the other one is one that I did with my team in the NGO. The first one um, was before the pandemic. So it could be in a location like a market, you're gonna see it now. And the other one had to be done at home. So it was even more difficult, but even so it worked out well. So I'm gonna share the video from me. We'll see you first. Okay, and I hope everyone can see it well. ¿Cuántas veces has buscado organizar las cuentas de tu negocio y tus cuentas de manera fácil, sencilla y rápida? Más aún cuando necesitas hacer un préstamo para seguir creciendo, pero no califico. Creo que encontré la solución, Mi Bolsillo, un aplicativo que me permite integrar mis cuentas de ahorro en un solo lugar, alcanzar objetivos de ahorro, inversión y poder pagar todas mis deudas y sobre todo acceder a servicios financieros que se acomoden a mis necesidades. Pero yo no tengo una cuenta bancaria. No te preocupes, Mi Bolsillo te ayudará a tener una cuenta digital. ¡Qué chévere! Yo también quiero usarlo. Para más información visita mibolsillo.p Ok, so this is the first one. And as you can see, we were in the market and you would ask yourselves, how much money did they spend on this? Well, very, very little. Actually lunch for all of our friends because Yamil, who's the main actor, is a friend of ours and he did it as a favor. He brought his friend with her, with him so that she would do the other part. And we have a friend who has a camera and he helped us and he also had the microphones. So he gave them to us and then we just bought lunch for everyone. So um, very small resources, but very nice impact. And now I'm gonna show you the video 
of the NGO Junior Achievement, where we wanted to do something to introduce our team in a creative way. And this is Jamil again, because now he works with the NGO with me. different quality in terms of camera, maybe the conditions, you know, where they are. We wanted them to feel comfortable wherever they, they work now regularly in their houses. We show ourselves in a very natural way. The only requirement was to wear the pieces that we have to call the t-shirt in black. highlight that she's not even in Lima. We're all in Lima in the capital of Peru, but she is in Hilo, that is a city in the south of Peru, near Arequipa and Cusco. Again, another video that was done with very, very little resources, such as a piece of paper. <laughs> Alberto, you're fast with that question. That question came up like, I don't know, 10 minutes later in the previous um, workshop that we did in the morning in Spanish. Okay, I will tell you how it all started. But um, what I wanted to say is that, as you can see, we have two different videos that have very little resources in terms of investment involved. And at the same time, they are very unique, very creative, and they solve the purpose that we needed to solve. So we can definitely create something that can be impacting, that can trigger emotions, and that can leave you asking questions without spending that much money, but doing it right, right? So, um, and what was written down in the, on the paper? The paper, this video was intently to announce the winners from a contest that we had. We do programs for students from 12 to 29 years old in, in youth employment, youth entrepreneurship, and um, economic education or financial education. And so we wanted to announce the winners from a contest. So we had a group of the team prepare this video. And at the end, we had a screen where we showed all the names. But um, since we liked it so much, we decided to have the rest of the team join. So we added, you know, the, the movements in the, the way the, the ball was going to fall and everything. And we recorded everyone else. Well, each one recorded themselves and we added the picture of the whole team in the end. And we ended up having a very nice video to present our team. If, if we have a conference or a webinar or wherever we want to show or the board of directors, Wherever we want to show our team, we can present it this way. So that was the paper. And now we're gonna go to the theoretical part. So we have seen first the practical part of how to make it happen. And now we'll go to theory, guys. But this doesn't have to be boring, please. We have to be able to interact. We have to be able to ask questions because that's what this is all about. And I love answering questions because that means you're, you're really truly really paying attention. 
and you're really truly connecting with me. So welcome all the questions. Okay, let's see if we can make this bigger. There we go. Okay, so promotional videos for startups. And this is something that I want you to start focusing and thinking about. And people tend to engage more with the video than if we do any other type of written content for, uh, content, for example. If I, if I were speaking and you didn't have the PPT with me or the videos that I just shown and I turn off my camera, it would be very hard to picture everything that I'm saying, right? You would have to use your imagination to go further and try to put a picture to whatever I'm saying. So it is known that something that is plain in terms of text or voice does not have the same emotional engagement as something that has images or sound and especially the combination of all these. So this was said by John Medina, a molecular biologist. He said that if humans hear a piece of information, just like the one that I said with plain piece of information, they will only remember 10% of it for three days. It's approximately three days and 10%. But if you add this information, some images or some music, or as I said, a mixture of these, um, you will remember 65% of the information. So you can see how it changes drastically from 10 to 65 just by adding other emotions, other things that connect with our senses, you know, that make it more powerful. So that's the reason why video or any audiovisual content engages more with the senses and helps us humans process information easily in a way that we not only understand it better, but also memorize it more or keep it for a longer period of time with ourselves. And that's what we want when we present our, our startups, right? We want people to connect with us, to be able to remember us and to see the impact that we can do or have in the world. So what is a promotional video then? A promotional video is a material or an audiovisual material that we use for marketing purposes or sales purposes. Marketing is very connected to sales. It's not the same. But they're really always connected. And depending on the environment in which we will use the video, we have to define certain things that would make the video accurate, right? We have to decide if this is gonna be spoken, if this is gonna be dramatized, if this is gonna be with a very fixed script, if we are gonna allow uh, improvisation, what are the rules that we're gonna have for a video to be able to connect and impact those that are watching it. And so, to make it right, because that's what we all want, I'm gonna give you just some steps or guidelines that will help you prepare a better and more impacting video. So what elements does a strong promotional video have? And I will show you 10, oh, nine, I'm sorry. There's nine elements that will change the course of your video. So first go beyond your pitch. We're used to pitching and, and I myself pitch almost every day. Today, after the meeting we had in the morning, well, before the meeting I had uh, pitching with an inv a possible investor, then I had a meeting with Endeavor, one um, accelerator here in Peru. And then after that, I'm gonna have, after this session, I'm gonna have another meeting with uh, some guys that are interested in investing on us as well. So I've been pitching all morning <laughs> and I'm pitching every day. So we are, we live, doing our pitch, right? It's something that we're so used to. We always know what to say. What is the problem? What is the solution? What is the market? What is the competition? Blah, blah, blah. And we have this already memorized and already part of us. But when we make this video, the promotional video, we want to go beyond that. We want to show other things that we might not say every day, or we might not say to everyone, and we want everyone to know. So I always say, that it's good to open with something that can make you feel a personal bond because we before it was known that brands were very rational in the way they spoke to clients because clients were also very rational in the way they, they understood things and digested things then it shifted to being more emotional and it was everything about emotions you know you had to connect in a deeper emotional way but now i think it's more integral 
it's the rational part of the consumer or the one who's watching whatever you're presenting that will rationalize some facts of the information you say, there's also emotions and it's very important. And I call it what startups, I say that startups are, have to be called soul companies. So I call it companies with a soul. You know, we have to show our soul in, all, in order to be able to reach to others' souls as well. So always open with something that you feel that can be a personal bond, something that can link or connect with the person who's receiving the message, right? We have to arouse curiosity and something like what happened with the paper and Alberto asking what was the paper about, right? That means that we have connected. You watch something and that gave you that hint of curiosity that will make you either see it again if you can or try to find out what happened or have a further step towards the action that we want, right? Um, we have to make an irresistible offer. We have to do something that, that people won't want to stick back to, but want to create action to, right? And say, okay, I'm gonna, I don't know, visit their website or call them or write them or somehow I want more information from these people. We also play it with rhetoric because we retell stories and we work with dialogues, right? But we have to always highlight our advantages in a very nice soft way. Why? Because there's plenty of startups nowadays. And if you see more than 80% is entrepreneur now. So there's several that are similar, but not necessarily the same. And that's what we have to highlight all the time. We have to say why we are different from the rest and why us instead of anyone else in our competition chart, right? And also adding value to what we do. Do we impact people? Do we change the world? Do we um, bring a solution that no one else has thought about? Do we, I don't know, change children's lives or impact people's um, health? So how do we add value to whatever we're doing, right? And this must also be connected with a call to action. You always have to say something that you want them to do afterwards. If you um, remember the first video in the end, it said for more information, contact, you will see your.p, which is her website. And that was my voice actually recorded it because that's what we wanted them to do, right? We want people to watch this video and in the end, go to me will see your.p to see what is that we have, right? So always try to end up with a call to action. In the case of the video oh, for my team, we finished with the team and, and the um, link to our social media because we want people to go there, right? And always close with a catchy tagline. This tagline doesn't have to be spoken. It can be written, it can be drawn, but anyhow, it has to be there. So find the best way that you want to present it, but always, always, always keep something that people will remember in their heads about you because that's the most important. Why every startup should have a promotional video. And here we have some reasons. So the first one is because we need to promote our products or services, right? If we have our business is because we want the business to make money, right? That's the ultimate goal. Whoever says, no, I'm just opening this startup because my heart is too big and I just want to help others. Well, yeah, that could be possible. My FinTech is a, a, a social impact FinTech, but we are for profit. And we're looking for growth, you know, in terms of clients and, and of course money, because that's the purpose of, of starting a business, right? We are not all NGOs. Would be beautiful, but we all can't, right? So first is to promote these, the products or services that we want people to buy. Second is to explain or present a new concept to the market something new that we want to show. It could be a new feature. It could be the way our program or process works. It could be, um, I don't know, if we have a new team member and we want to present a team member, if we want to present a testimonial from one of our users. So anything new that we want to share can be shared in a video way. Also, we want to, uh, we use, or another reason is to use it to highlight our differentials, because as I said, it's very important to remark what we do different, right? 
it's that outstanding thing that makes us memorable. So we have to always try to remind people what makes us memorable. Also to reach a broader audience. And that is very logical because um, what, when you use YouTube or Vimeo, you're getting to a lot of people. It's social media, social media means spreading the word. So a video allows you to put it there and having a lot of people see it in the same quality or the same pace or the same message. You don't have to repeat yourself a thousand times to get to a thousand people, right? You just have one piece that does it for you. And also to use it as part of your sales team kit because for us, and that helps a lot when you have someone new in your sales team and maybe that person doesn't fully know the story or doesn't add the passion that you as a co-founder add because I, I always say that as co-founders, we live the dream. But sometimes people that come to the company later, they do not necessarily buy that story fully, you know, or they do, but they don't have that, you know, passion that we have because we have founded it. So they can open a sales meeting with a video that will present and then they just have to add on to that. And some steps to make it happen, but now I want to show you and I will open it in my drive because I just remembered that I have a video that I didn't show in the previous session, but I think it will be very useful for you. I wanted to show you one of our latest videos. Everything is up here. These are all the screens to make the demo happen. One second, see if I can find it. Mm. Wait, hold on. I'm going to open another part of my drive and download it to show you because I think it depicts what I'm trying to say. I didn't want to do it in YouTube because you told me, Eduardo, that YouTube was not good. But the audio is just. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's going to be of any trouble. Uh -huh, here it is, my demo. Share screen again, right here. And, and you will tell me if, if you can hear it well or not. It's just music. So, so if the volume doesn't help, it doesn't really matter. And it's this one right here. We have it in English and in Spanish.
So this video was intended to present the features that we have and how to use the app. So we realized that whenever we were having Um, so whenever we had a sales meeting, we had people asking us how the app worked. And we don't open, since we are a B2B2C, we don't open users to anyone. We just sell the users. So we thought, how can we make people understand what we do in an easier and faster way without having to open a user for them and without having to say, hey, no, you know what? We don't show that until you're a client because, of course, they needed to know. So we um, use this graphic video. As you see, there's no human intervention. It's just plain screens and words, but it is a demo to show everyone how it works. So this is also something that you can do with very little resources. There are several apps such as Powtoon and, and so many others that with very little money, you can create something very beautiful like this. And what are the steps to make it happen? Here are 10 steps that I want you to see. So step one is identify your goal. You will, excuse me for some are in English and some are in Spanish. But... Cynthia, excuse me. We're uh -huh. still seeing your YouTube screen. Oh, really? Um, let me see why is that happening? Maybe because I need to share screens again. Um, let's see. I will stop sharing and share again, okay? So I can share with. Now you stop seeing my my screen. Exactly. Now we see you. Now we see, yeah. Okay. So why is it not? Okay, I'm closing the YouTube, but I want it, I want to save the link because I want to show you one more in the end. And then you see me block. I saw someone write in the chat, um, is, was that a question? I will check it right now to see if it was a question in the middle of the way or if it was something else. Okay, so we're here, we're here, we're here. There we go. Share screens. There. You can see my screen now, you can see the PowerPoint. Yes? Perfect. Okay, great. So we have 10 steps to success. The first one is identify your goal. What is the goal that you have, as I said, one of the videos that I presented, the first one was to invite clients to use Vivo Tea. The second one was to show everyone our team. The third one that I presented was to explain or show in a very easy way how our app works and how you can use it if you have it, right? So we have to define what our goal is. Is it to sell? Is it to show a new feature? Is it to present testimonials? Is it to present the team? Is it to, um, I don't know, apply to a contest? What is the purpose of your video, right? Once you have that, you have to choose the direction your video is gonna take. Is it gonna be uh, a video that is gonna be linear? Do you want to start with something and, and end up picturing that again? Do you want to make it, um, I don't know. In this case, for example, we, we started with one of our team members and ended up with me because we, we didn't want to start with a director. I'm the director, but we didn't want to start with a director. We wanted me to close the video and, and make it different. You know, So you have to choose which direction your, your video is going to take. Then you find the tone. Are you going to be colloquial? Are you going to be super formal? How are you going to dress for the video? Is everyone going to dress the same? Or you're not going to use the same t-shirt? You're going to, I don't know, use a certain light? Are you going to do during the day, during the night? You have to establish this to make it at least look smooth, right? In terms of visuals. Then you have to define the duration. And here I always recommend from a minute to a minute and a half. Our human attention doesn't go beyond that. I have some videos that are longer, such as one that I want to show you in the end, but it's worth that. And we only present it to those that we know that have more than the two minutes to see it and are interested in seeing it because we talk about the features of the app and the results. And, and we go, we expand the information a little bit more. So we know that this person definitely wants to see it. And then we present it. If not, we go with something very short. We have to define the style. If it's going to be, as I said, graphic, or if it's going to have humans in there, or if it's just going to be pictures, 
if you're going to have, I don't know, maybe the picture of someone and then only the voice added. So you have to define which style if you want it to be very colloquial and funny, or if you want to uh, show everyone you're having fun as a team, or if you want to show that you're super strict and formal and, and, and that you have a very, I don't know, squared way of presenting things, you know. It depends on what your ADN is, right? In the end, it has to show what your, your blood, I always say we have a special blood as entrepreneurs. So you have to show that, you have to be able to present that. You have to be able to let others feel what you feel and understand you as a team with just this piece, you know, with that, just this audiovisual piece. So I think that if I asked you, how do you think my team in the NGO is? What would the answer be? And I will read you here. Let me see if I can read this back here. How do you think this team here? Mm -hmm. Oh, what's going on? Why, why am I not adding on here? Right. I want to read you. Um, so, how do you think my team is? Is it a very formal team? Is it a team that, um, I don't know, has fun? Is it a team that where everyone is very serious? Exactly, it seems fun. Yes, we always have fun. <laughs> and we are very close to each other. I always say they are my family. So. Um, I think when you see the video, you can definitely see how they feel and how we feel, and we're not forcing it, right? It's very natural because that is something that is very important as well. You have to be able to show in a very natural way what you want to say, because if not, if it's too stiff, people tend to say, okay, this is fake, right? And you can notice when something is fake. So once you have defined your duration, what direction you're gonna take, what the tone will be, what the style you're gonna use. Um, you have to plan your content. And this is something where I always stop a little bit and, and try to make emphasis because normally people say, okay, I'm gonna make a video. I just stand there and say whatever comes. I already know the story, but it's not like that. You have to plan your content if you want the video to be good. Because if you're improvising, maybe, it, will come out well, and that would be thumbs up, but it might not, and you would have wasted time and resources and others. So you have to plan your content. If you write a script, which is good, I recommend not only memorizing it, but making it yours. I remember the first time we went to a con uh, contest in Australia. <laughs> we first won a contest in Peru. That was our first one, and this was our second trip. So or a first trip or second contest. And I remember when we arrived, Julio and I arrived to Australia, we had very short hours of sleep. We were dragging and sleeping and oh my gosh, it was awful. And I arrived one day, he arrived then after two days or so because the first day was only for females, female funders. And, um, and I remember we had this pitch super planned and, and we memorized it so well, but for me, in my case, I didn't feel those were my my words. You know, you know how you speak. I I'm a bit more colloquial, maybe. So I was like struggling to memorize those words. And I was like, cool, you, I, this doesn't come out well because I don't remember the words you want me to say. And it was so funny because even so, I forced myself to memorize it. And the first day we had to present, my head just went blank. I stood there. It was the trials, so it wasn't the finals, right? And I stood there and I just stared at these people that were going to be the judges. And I was like, I couldn't elaborate. And, and I couldn't even improvise because I had this thing in my head, you know, that I had forced to <laughs> set. So I couldn't present what I was forced to say and I couldn't present myself in, in a very colloquial way either because I was blocked, you know? So. From then on, I remember walking back to the Airbnb that we had rented, and, uh, and I said, um, well, you know what, I'm going to make this mine. I'm sorry, I'm going to change half of it. You know, I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to have the same message, 
but this has to be my words. Of course, he agreed totally. He had seen me panic before. And, and he said, yeah, let's, let's do that. I'll do the same. So we both, you know, worked on it and had the same wording, but we made it ours. And you could feel it different. In the end, we won the competition. And that's where I won even outstanding women entrepreneurs. So um, we showed them that we had shifted circumstances, but it was hard. And, and it taught me something very important. You cannot force yourself into a bitch because when you stand there and these are not your words and this is not what you're used to and, and this is not something that closes, totally closes to you, then you're gonna mess it up. So please write a script, but do not, do not, do not try to memorize a script, but make it yours, right? This is only a guideline. And also use a storyboard if possible. This is an optional thing, but I recommend it because when you record something, you record pieces. I don't know if you guys, you know, nowadays the trend is TikTok. So when you do TikTok, you have to do thousands, right? And then also when you do TikTok, sometimes you have these ones that you do a little bit and then you add something else and you add the words and you end up having something fully planned or that looks fully planned, but was made from pieces. And it's the same when you, create your video, you're going to have different pieces of video. So you have to organize yourself well to see how you're going to start and what is going to come next and what next and, and how you're going to end so that it has a, a graphic idea that you can follow whenever you're editing, especially if you're in-house editing that and, and you're not a, a special, um, I mean, a, an expert editor, right? Then production comes. Of course, production is the part where you make the video happen. And here is another tricky one, which is post-production. Post-production can be tricky. Nowadays, there are tons of um, apps that one can use without being an expert to be able to edit. From Movie Maker to, I don't know, several else, other tools. But um, I think you have to find the one that suits you, the one that you can watch videos on YouTube or tutorials and you can manage, one that might not cost so much. And then you can post produce your own videos. And I think you're going to have a wonderful result. I don't know if you have any questions up to now. Let me know. I already showed you the examples. So I'm going to show you just one more. And then we go to the Q&A time. OK, now you will have to tell me if you see the video that I'm going to This one is a longer one, the one that I told you that I don't show everyone. In Latin America, more than 200 million users have access to smartphones. As a matter of fact, by 2020, 65% of them will have access to the internet on them. From our users, 72% achieve savings goals. 67% of them save to pay debts. And 29% of them have shifted to new financial services. Hi, I'm Cynthia, and together with Julio, Cesar, and Gabriel, we founded Mi Bolsillo, which means my pocket in Spanish. It is known that a financially healthy entrepreneur is eight times more likely to grow. And this is why we have created Mi Bolsillo, an app that minimizes the risk and allows entrepreneurs to grow. Mi Bolsillo was built on our experience in Brazil. Validate. So this one is the longest version of our video that we send to possible clients and I'm going to stop sharing or leave it here in the Q&A. And as you see, we use the same minimal resources. We got, um, what was it a lounge or something from an incubator? An incubator. They allowed us to use their, their lounge area to film. And the same friend that filmed the other one helped us here. So his microphones and his camera, and then addition pin. So as you can see, you can do either something like the first thing that I showed you, or one like the one that we did for the team that was very practical, very, you know, warmy and, and colloquial. One like this last one, and something that was pointed out this morning that I want to share with you as well from this one was that we um, 
we put ourselves on one side of the camera so that we have all this blank space to add screens or words or any other things that we wanted to add. So I think that was very useful and that is a very useful angle to film yourself on the side so you have all this blank space to work with. And now I'm gonna read your questions. Let's see. Cynthia, uh, thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I wanna remind everyone that we're gonna start a little Q and A now. I wanna remind everyone that you can send your questions through the chat or you can also raise your hand and then um, we'll open the mic for you and you can, and you can ask your questions. Um, right now, Alberto uh, has mm -hmm. a question. Uh, thank you so much, Alberto. He, will, he would like to know of some affordable platforms that he can use to create his video, not so basic as Movie Maker, but also not as expensive as something like Premiere. And also mm -hmm. if you have had any experience with Filmora. I haven't used Filmora myself. I'm not the one who edits, I have to confess, because I'm very bad at it, very impatient. So that is done by my partner, one of my partners, Julio. He is very patient and he can do it perfectly or else it's a mess. So um, I, we, what we use is Movie Maker. Movie Maker is free in, in your computer or in most computers. I know that he also has a couple for um, Mac because he uses MacBooks and I can ask him if, if you have any, have any specifications on Mac. But for me, Movie Maker is the best tool you can use and it helps everyone. You know, it's, it's like super user-friendly. You have tons of videos on tutorials and others uh, to add features in, on internet. So it's an open source. And, and I think that, that that could really help you, Alberto. I don't know if there's any other question. Cynthia, I, act, I actually had a question. <laughs> sure. I was, I was thinking, um, what would you think is a sensible amount of money for someone, for an entrepreneur to spend on, on a promotional video? Like, what would you say would be a sensible amount? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very good question. And why? Because it will always, the answer will always be, it depends. But if we go further and try to set an amount, the first one I showed you cost us lunch for everyone and probably taxis, right? We paid them the taxis to get to the place and then lunch to treat them for what they had helped us with. So I would say, I don't know, from $50 to $100 could be the minimum. If you wanna go a little bit further and maybe hire a designer to do the graphics and then just have the process of creation, you can go, from 200 to 300, you know, in a regular price and from then on. But I would say the minimum, minimum, if you want to have someone help you is 50 to hundred dollars, which is not that much, right? Of course you can do things for free. Like I did with my team, the one from my team, it, it's actually free because one of the guys in the team, Jorge, he knows all these video tools and he can edit. So we just filmed ourselves with, with the cell phones we sent him all the videos in a, in a drive and then he made the video happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Cynthia. Um, Juan, I believe has a question in the chat. Um, I believe he, uh, he is asking you if you have any experience with OBS Studio, I believe is what he. Um, I don't, but I will give you my email in the end. So you can write me and I can ask Julio about this for sure. And I can let you know if it's something that we can recommend or not. Because I haven't used it. I'm, I'm being very honest. How do you recommend me to have a really good storytelling? Okay. Storytelling is very nice to be used. Um, storytelling helps you put people in context in a way that can, you know, smoothly take them from beginning to end. And and it can really get your attention caught and have you connect with the story that you're telling. So if you are going to do storytelling, you have two options. People, if it's a real client, okay? And if not, you can use graphics. Um, I used to have a marketing agency for more than 10 years and I will share with you my Vimeo channel, so you can go there and find several videos that we did for clients. 
but just for you to have an idea on how to make it work. My agency is green octopus. Design. I closed it last year because I was going to focus on the fintech and the NGO, but this still exists. So you can go to vimeo.com green octopus design and you can see several things that we have done. And here I'm going to show you one that is these are from events we had, but um, I want to show you one that is only graphics. These are testimonials. For example, this is something very beautiful. We had to film testimonials for bandwidth. Okay. And what we did is I wanted to show that this was real. Okay. These were testimonials for, for the HR area and they wanted people to want to join them as a bank as workers so uh, what i asked my team was to film everything from the moment that we were putting the microphone on them till the moment we finished so that you can actually see their faces all the time and it's not like action you know when they say let's take a picture and so you put your best smile possible but that's not actually the real you the real you is the one that does all these faces while you're talking and that you know smiles sometimes and sometimes doesn't that makes mistakes so um, I'm going to show you this real quick because it's very short and and I I don't Empecé al banco hace siete años al área de riesgos para ver eh, riesgos crediticios. Luego de eso tuve la oportunidad de entrar al área de productos y servicios para empresas como ejecutivo de productos y hace ya dos años y medio vengo trabajando como jefe de productos de cartas fianzas de pagares mayoristas y también de pasivos. Todos estos años me ha dado la oportunidad de, de seguir creciendo profesionalmente en mi trabajo, en mis estudios, lo cual agradezco mucho esta oportunidad. Considero que el banco es, da muchas oportunidades a, a todos los trabajadores para seguir creciendo y depende realmente de cada uno el esfuerzo que le damos para salir adelante. ¿no? Very honest, because as I say, oops, because as I say, we have to try to be as honest as possible if we want um, people to believe what we're saying, right? You can easily tell. So. You see the first part where he is asking, where, where should I focus or should I see you or the other area, you know, the other camera. And, and so you can see that he's connecting. And then here we have others that are with the graphic. Um, maybe this one real quick. They sell, um, I think it's furniture and supplies. <laughs> have here because I think they will help you um, write a story for your video and see how we told other stories. These were a different budget because I was the agency and was selling them to the clients. But you can also do that now if you if you um, put some effort into trying to learn this Pro tune, for example, or any other similar and you can make an infomercial yourself. I know that for sure. I don't know if that answers you, Alberto. I hope it does. Um, Cynthia, uh, I think we're going to finish with one more question, which is going to come from Super. me. Because I actually had another question. Um, <laughs> sure. uh, you, and in your presentation, you told us a lot of things that should be included in the video. But I was wondering if there were things that you, in your experience, shouldn't be included in the video that, that you don't recommend um, are inserted into the video. <sighs> I wouldn't recommend so many people in it if it's not um, some, like if you see the first one that we did, it only had two people like the guy that was supposedly selling and then his assistant, you know, uh, because you, you want the person to be able to focus on the message and on not on how many people you have there. Especially if it's, it's a very small and impacting video. If you're doing a commercial for TV, then it's something else. You can have as many people as you want. You can have a soccer field. 
But in this case, I wouldn't put so many people in there. If you tell the story, I wouldn't tell the story and make it super long, but I would try to, you know, show or depict whatever highlights you have in the story and make that the video so that you don't bore people. Because that's the only problem you can tend to, if you get over a certain amount of time and a certain amount of things, you can bore people. And that's what you don't want because you want people to not only see it once, but you want them to want to watch it again, right? And something else that I wouldn't do is put any music that needs rights or permissions, um, as well as music that has any wording. You want to smooth music. It can be upbeat if you want the rhythm to be, you know, upbeat or low beat, it doesn't matter. But, um, but we wouldn't want something that is singing there, you know, that has something that will overlap whatever message we're trying to transmit. So that, that would be my no-nos. Perfect, thank you so much, Cynthia. Um, that would be all the time that we have for questions and answers. Um, Cynthia, yeah, I'm gonna throw it back to you. In personal information. Um, yeah, I'm gonna throw it to, to you just one more time so you can, you know, give your closing remarks and say, you know, some last words and mm -hmm. Then we'll finish the session. Super. Well, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for wanting to learn more. I think that is the first thing that makes you uh, uh, an entrepreneur that will excel. Um, there's, there's always something to learn and I hope this has been useful for all of you. Here's my information. Um, I'm very open to receiving emails. If you have any, write me or WhatsApp because I believe that we're here to help others, to support each other. This is um, collective growth. It will always be like that. So I'm very happy to connect and support anything that you need me to support. Um, also, if you get to do your videos and you want to send them to me and say, hey, Cynthia, what do you think about this one? Or should I, I don't know, trim anything? Or I'm very happy to watch all the videos you send me and, and let you know what I think about them and give you suggestions. And, and as a final message, I um, just want you to know that you have chosen a very nice path for life. Uh, being an entrepreneur is one of the most gratifying paths you can choose. Um, you are making your dreams true. And that is something that, that requires a lot of strength and a lot of um, self-worth and a pause because some days are gonna be good, some others are not gonna be so good. Some days are gonna be very, very difficult, but it is the resilience and the passion that will drive you through, accompanied by the um, adaptability that you get to manage because we learn a lot and soft skills are my favorite skills. You know, as entrepreneurs, you have to have this auto motivation to drive yourself on the way and, and never stop only to breathe and then continue. Also, um, as I said to the previous group, five things that to me, when I'm a judge in competitions, I, I always highlight from, from entrepreneurship are the first one, team. Your team is so, so important. Take care of your team, pamper each other, thank each other, hug each other, even fight with each other because it's necessary to have an open communication. And that is very important. I always say that a good team can take any project, even the worst, to the best result and any bad team can ruin anything even you know gold so um have a good team and encourage and nourish your team second uh, i will say your how different you are from the rest of solutions so always work on highlighting and finding things that will differentiate you from the rest the third thing would be your market size know your market and your market size well see what is your tam 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 where can you go what can you do that is very, very important. Manage those numbers so that you can um, present what is your target goal today, what is in a few years, what is the total addressable market that you have. It's very important. Fourth would be um, traction. It's very important if you can start selling, if you already, if you have a prototype, try to go further. But whatever it can do for you to sell, that is a step forward always. Those um, startups that have traction for me is equal to validation, right? If you have been in the market and you have sold and people have validated your, your solution and that is good. And the last one would be creativity and expansion. Um, how big can you get? Where else can you go? If it's just your city now, but then the whole country and then where else? 
that is very important, how scalable as a startup you are, because that will show everyone the growth or potential growth you have. So those five things keep in mind and happy to help you in anything else. Thank you so much for sharing this hour with me. Cynthia, thank you so much. Um, to all our attendees, before we finish the session, we wanna ask you to please um, fill out a small, a small survey that'll appear to you now. Um, it, it just takes a couple of moments and we would really appreciate it um, if you could fill it out. So we're just gonna give you guys one more minute to fill out um, that survey and then we'll, we'll finish the session. Super. I will start saying goodbye. I'm running to another meeting. Okay, Luis, thank you. Cynthia, thank you so much for being with us. You know, we always appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you so much for, for the information mm -hmm. and everything you shared. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Good luck. So um, from us at YABT, we want to thank every single attendee. Um, we want to thank you so much. Of course, we want to thank Cynthia for all her knowledge and her impactful um, presentation. We know that everyone, every single one of you will take something away from it and that's what we're here to do. Um, of course, we also wanna thank um, Osil Ventures again for their support um, in this session. Um, we wanna remind every one of you that this is just one of a whole session of bootcamp uh, sessions that we prepare. So I ask you to always be, to follow us on our social media at YABTS on Twitter and at YABTDC on Facebook. So you guys can see where the next um, session will be. And as I said before, please, go to tickamericas.net, discover the categories. Um, I'm sure that there will be something for you and always register. Register early so you can really take benefits from all that we have to offer. And thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and I hope to see you guys in the next bootcamp session. Um, thank you guys for, for being here and thank everyone who will watch this uh, recorded version um, at a later date. Thank you guys too. And I hope you guys have a great afternoon.